the best five supplements that actually work for natural lifters. Call me Haymaker. Always going big. Yeah, you know the kid. Call me Haymaker. 95 or 95. This is going to be uh, based off of our own personal experience, our own personal opinions. However, it's going to be largely based within scientific research mainly with research from examine.com and a big shout out to Eric Helms. I'm using a lot of his bodybuilding guides article to support this video. All right, so keep in mind these are for naturals, not for non-naturals. There's obviously more supplements that will do better things than these, but we're gonna kick it off with the top five supplements for natural lifters. Let's dive into it. Okay, so number one is going to be creatine. This is being deemed by Eric Helms as the most ergogenic and safe supplement on the market that's actually potent and has a direct effect on muscle gain. This has been proven and replicated in several studies and what it actually does is it helps by achieving muscle saturation within the muscle which in turn utilizes your body's ability to use water for ATP, giving you increased strength and potentially muscle size. Another wonderful thing about the supplement is that there is no side effects, guys. A lot of people will talk about a lot of outdated and unproven studies about how it's gonna cause kidney or liver failure. This is simply not true, and it is a fallacy. So you are safe to take creatine. The next question is dosages. A lot of people wanna know if it should be loaded or not. So you will be able to load creatine and this will help you achieve muscle saturation faster, which is what you need for it to actually work. Usually they say it will happen in about seven to 14 days, doing on about the three milligram recommendation. However, the only negative side effect that could come with loading, so this is why I wouldn't recommend it, is GI discomfort. And that's something you want to avoid. If you really need to load it for a particular reason, myself and Kyle will go off of it to kind of cut back on some of our water weight when we're getting ready for powerlifting comp. So what we'll do is we'll load for powerlifting and we have actually been okay but I would recommend testing it before you do anything like that so a lot of studies were done one where they loaded one group with 20 grams of creatine a day this is a lot that is about four tablespoons and another where they did three milligrams which is the low end recommendation and they found that both were able to improve muscle saturation by 20% with the creatine and in turn both groups saw a one to two kilogram increase in body mass so this proves that it doesn't really matter if you load it, but it might help you get there faster. Other studies have shown that. So a lot of supplement companies will market some creatines as better than others. The, um, a common one is KA or CEE. They'll say that these are better because they're non-bloating and they're different. However, this isn't the case. You want to stick with the creatine monohydrate. In fact, it might even be better than those pure, more expensive forms, and here's why. So as you guys can see here, two researchers, Talon and Child, found a greater portion portion of CE and KA are degraded in the stomach than CM. Additionally, recent investigations have shown that 20 to 42 days of CEE or KA supplementation did not increase muscle creatine concentrations more than creatine monohydrate. Thus, it appears that creatine monohydrate may in fact be the most effective as it achieves more of that saturation effect. So case in point, you're going to want to take about 3 grams a day. You can load if you need to for some competition or some one weird reason or you're weirdly not patient and you you want to risk that discomfort but I really wouldn't recommend it unless you're getting it for free stick with creatine monohydrate you can get it pretty cheap um, all right on to number two so number two we're going with protein this is a supplement however it's also a nutrient people need to memorize and know that it's a nutrient it's not a magic powder protein isn't any better than chicken it's just such a good supplement especially for natural lifters because it's very hard to hit the correct protein um, recommendations with the Western diet. And that's why just to have it being able to take it around, it kind of tastes like a milkshake, especially if you're getting a good one, plug EHP, then uh, that's what I like to do. I make protein ice cream, I make, I have it after workouts. It's just, it's so versatile and for that reason it's so effective. And it also contains a lot of our next number three supplement, which are amino acids. Let's dive into that. The reason these little guys are one of the number one taken supplements among bodybuilders and other fitness athletes are that numerous studies in both humans as well as animal subjects have shown that BCAs before or after um, periods of exercise, even during as well, sorry, have shown to increase muscle protein synthesis. Once again, as we noted there, the building blocks of protein, and it also plays a role in preventing muscle degradation. 
This is huge because this is so important, especially during training. We're using up a lot of that energy and fuel sources that you have, and when you're on a deficit, you wanna be very careful of the energy sources you're using. That's why these are commonly recommended to be taken before, after, and during exercise. Each person has their own little area to take them, but those are the common recommendations. Other studies have shown that uh, supplementing BCAAs in between meals can actually play an important role once again with this muscle protein synthesis and maintaining that level through the day, therefore allows me to utilize that protein to its maximal ability while increasing the metabolic thermogenic effect of muscle protein synthesis. People also supplement these individually as varies from the numerous types of aminos. Further, they're especially effective because in some studies it's actually shown an acute response to lean muscle increase. This is huge huge guys pay attention as well as strength gain. These have only been found in very acute small studies and more research needs to be done to prove this, but these are possible other benefits of the CAAs. There are currently no side effects listed with these. Also, they taste incredible. It's like a crystal light kind of formula, especially the AHP ones. Once again, plugging that in. They're so good. I really enjoy them and I actually do take them in between meals as well as during my workout and it's something I really look forward to and it even helps me um, psychologically with dieting and everything because it kind of gives me a fun little drink to sip on. It tastes like Gatorade and they're killer guys so that's number four. Three. Three. Now on to number four. Kyle's coming out of caffeine. Supplement number four is caffeine. Now, this can be an energy drink, pre-workout, coffee, caffeine pill, anything like that. Before I jump into it, we have a card right here talking about actual dosages, side effects, and all that that I highly recommend you guys checking out. Now, caffeine is something that can help you guys feel more productive, um, and especially it'll help you push harder in the gym and make all of those gains possible. For those of you who are lacking on sleep, what it's gonna do is it's gonna energize you to do more reps, to do more sets, to push longer in the gym, and your gains will become, you know, over 9,000. And it's just like a super awesome feeling, and I highly suggest you guys trying out this supplement and making sure that you are not going over the recommended dosages or feeling any of the side effects that we have listed in our other video. Number five is an obvious one, but unfortunately too many bodybuilders look past it because there's not necessarily a direct correlation to muscle increase. But what you need to keep in mind is the long-term effect of these and keeping your body prime. So number five is none other than your micronutrients, multivitamins, and minerals. This is commonly overlooked because they're, like I said, they're not anabolic in any sense. They don't necessarily help increase mus muscle protein synthesis in any way. But you gotta keep in mind, something like supplement and vitamin D can increase your energy and your mood and throughout the day that can correlate with your training. Although not directly, it has a very pivotal role. Things like fish oils as well have their numerous effects, helping with uh, soreness and bone cracking and such. And, a lot of people look past these instead of thinking that if I'm utilizing these for a long period of time, I can get the maximal effect of them and overall it will help my training. And especially with the Western diets that a lot of us are eating, we're eating very non-nutritious diets that aren't, non-nutritious diets, sorry, that aren't commonly found with tons of vitamins and minerals. Not enough, not enough of us are having vitamins, and minerals with our foods, we're not eating our vegetables, and that in turn is technically screwing us, especially as bodybuilders when you're in a deficit, you're putting your body in a very dangerous state, you're depriving it of a lot, so you need to make sure that you're taking your multis, magnesium and vitamin D are my top three micros that you need to be taking. Number four, I'd come in with that omega threes fish oil, and then make sure you guys are on that. Hopefully you really enjoyed this video. If you guys like it and we can get over 250 likes, I'll do my next top five supplements that might kind of work, because these are kind of your staples. Past this, I wouldn't say there's a ton of stuff you need. There's some stuff you can add on if you got some money to spend and you're a supplement freak. I personally am not. I'm very content with keeping it minimal. If you guys are looking to save on some supplements, get some supplements that we trust and love, check out ehplabs.com and use code Colossus10. We'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Peace. I'm a fiend, bro.